mixing and the excellent grasp of it. Um, just kind of two little questions and suggestions for you. Um, I think that throughout you can give a little bit more sense of punctuation, okay? And there are times at the ends of the bars, for instance, as it begins, it continues on the two, uh, you know, opening bars, uh, three bars, crescendo, drop again, crescendo, drop again. Can you make ever so slight a break here, you know, at the ends of these, so that these bars are not smashed together? It's, it's quick, okay? It's harmonically quite adventurous for that time and still for this time, okay, in, in our modern era, it's still, for most audiences, it will sound rather bizarre harmonically. So whatever you can do to help clarify what's going on uh, will help your listener follow what's going on. So if, can you try again, and then when you get to the end of this part, just a little bit more of a lift, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> and stop. Yeah, and really release the sound. Good, again. Good. Try not to get quite so heavy at the end of the bar. Okay, good, and next one. Good, now put them together and have a little break. So there should be just a very small fraction, but a little bit of silence. It will help help the listeners, uh, you know, follow what's going on. Um, this piece is really very funny in certain places, right? And so, what's the key to a lot of humor? Do you do you like comedians? Yeah. Who's your favorite comedian? Do you have a favorite? Uh, there's a pianist. I forgot the name. Like something to. Um, yeah, there's a pianist. Victor Borga, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great comedian with the, with the instrument. So, um, but there, of course, there are a lot of stand-up comics and, and that, that you might enjoy. Uh, one of the great keys to comedy is timing. Okay, how the how the joke is set up, how the punchline is put. Your punchline here is in this closing cadence here. So you have to figure out how to do that closing cadence a little funnier. And one of the suggestions I have for you is, notice you have the marcato marking here, maybe use it a little bit as a time marking, perhaps delay this just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you play from here, and when you do it this time, slightly delay that last. Sounding. So make sure that you keep 
you know, those hidden all the way through there. Um, here's some other places where you can just have more of a, like a breath, like we were talking in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, really lift the sound. Can you go from here now? Rehearse it, play these two bars, and just completely stop them. <laughs> Sometimes I miss it's a longer melody. It's got those other notes. Okay, can you play it and keep the full melody alive? Mm -hmm. One of the challenges, of course, is your left hand's got this A flat right next to this note. So these alto voice, get rid of them. Just put them way in the background so they don't compete. That's where part of the problem. See, they're competing. <laughs> Stay. Uh, you always have a competitive voice there in the alto. Come out of the way. Do it again. Good, good. I love your tremolo. It's nice and brilliant, loud and fast. Very, very good. Now, in response to the tremolo, uh, in the fortissimo, you have a triple piano, you know, this uh, figure coming down. Probably it's supposed to be. It's written out in notes, but probably it's really supposed to be the effect of a glissando. So you've got and then answered like that. So can you play this in such a way that it sounds more like a glissando and not like a, a, an impressive etude, you know, that you're showing us? Because you play it very well, your fingers are great, all that stuff. Which, let's try the following. Play this as written, then play me a glissando with both hands, give me some answer. Yeah, yeah. But play first the fortissimo so we have the contrast. Good. And then try not to make a crescendo on your glissando. It's hard because the strings get longer. Go ahead. Good. And can you play the glissando slightly more rapidly? Get down there. Right, but staying light. Now, play as written and try to make your lovely little notes sound more like a lasagna. But you love to have, I mean, okay. That's the idea. That's the idea. And of course, it's hard because you, you're tri starting triple piano. And, oh, and really should be making the minio within that. And you're going lower in the instrument so the strings get lighter, so be, uh, get longer. So be very careful to try not to make a crescendo. It's harder to do this in the nature of the piano. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the uh, middle section. Uh, getting into this really kind of, yours was a little blunt, okay? A little, it may, maybe can be done more subtly. So we get down, and then that next lick that goes into it, maybe take a little more time with that. So but give me the glissando, I mean the figure coming down and then going to the next section. So yeah. Yeah, just your little notes coming down. Yeah. So these notes before, yeah. That syncopated F here, that's the destination of all that music. So, so where, where are we yeah, pick it up from right here if you want. You're gonna play this. So the music from there goes all the way to that note, not to just the bass. Okay.
what is the man right here uh, over these chords coming up in the next bar? What's he write? Uh, and what does that mean? Very somber. Yeah, or the same, the words are the same in English. So somber and expensive, okay? You know, in the Massey class yesterday, we did an excellent class with uh, Ravel and uh, Ondine, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Professor Juana was talking about some of the kind of non expressivo qualities in Ravel, mm -hmm. and uh, th th that the music is approached not in a romantic fashion, etc. It was very well explained. Mm -hmm. And that's all an excellent capturing of that, of the style. However, however, there are times in Ravel when he writes Espressivo, or Espressivo, mm -hmm. then the game changes a little bit. It's not necessarily romantically expressive, Espressivo, like maybe Schumann or Chopin or, or you know, an earlier composer, but the quality has changed. So this more somber or mournful quality has to be more evoked in the way you play it, okay? It's got to have more feeling, okay, in, in the sound. Okay, try it. Would you please bring it? Good, excellent. That's better. And then pay good attention to these slurs that you're given. So I am with. Just as we talked earlier in the piece about the, at the ends of measures having just a tiny little bit of space, make sure that you know uh, you're going to have a clipped sound, but that those slurs are very clear, and each slur is an emotive gesture. You know, you start well and then keep all of those emotive gestures going. Okay. Um, would you uh, play for me? Let's pick it up right here because I want to talk. I want to hear this one more time from here. Good, good. That is better now. Earlier you would kind of over voice the top the soprano. And we do need a bit more soprano for balance reasons so that we can hear the clarity of the rest of the chord. But be very careful in these structures in, in Ravel that you see as well where the, they're, they have, they're playing with parallelism, all right? These parallel chords, or sometimes they'll be parallel fourths and fifths, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, you have to have enough body in the lower voices so we hear that parallelism, because when you performed for us before, this was all fine in that regard, but when you got here, pretty much I lost the sense of the parallelism in the other voices. I heard a nice top, okay? But just watch it and make sure that you have a full body sound. Here is another place. Here you have to, you have like no break at all, but the man's giving you an eighth rest here. Okay, so this place you really need to lift. Can you go from the bar four? Forty-five.
almost always engage the pedal in some way. One of the reasons it's not so uh, effective when you do the da da is sometimes you're just playing that B flat with no pedal at all. Okay? So a beautiful pedal. You know, make sure you pedal. Seem to do too much there. Maybe you want to get it to go from here. Show me what you're going to do again. Even it's definitely not very, you know, very expressive. So, what, how, do, how does one create expression in music? Mm. I mean, just sound and timing. Sound and timing, what else? What do you do to this sound to make it expressive? Warmer. Warmer? If I talk to you <laughs> like this with no inflection, okay. now I notice I'm teaching and talking. My voice goes up, it goes down. Mm -hmm. So it's the inflection, it's the nuance. This is what makes for language to be expressive, but also music. So think about how you're going to inflect it. It cannot be all flat. Try, generally when we have three notes in music that are slurred, mm -hmm. a fairly common way to, to bring the expression up, go toward the second one. Try that, so don't start too loudly. Better do it without me singing, you do it. Good, now add the bass line to this much music. Let's hear 
hear the, the, the melody. slightly frantic. What's, yeah. Why does that happen? It's hard to it, give, uh, you, I, I don't think you can give, give yourself time. Okay, don't, it's, this is a loose kind of section. Do it again and just give yourself time to get down there. Transition going back to the first part. It's really quite, a, quite amazing uh, in, the, in the piece. I think you get too excited too soon. Okay, so I know you know it's, you're going to you're going to go return to the first tempo, but not right away. You know, so this is more the. Okay, we started this section. I know he says this here, but I would take a little interpretive license and I would be a little under the first tempo. Mm -hmm. So I gradually, you know, so when you're back, you know, where it returns over here. Mm -hmm. I'd have a plan when that whole section is gradually gets that way. Okay, so can you get into it a little bit and. Uh, Silence, please do that.